Greetings, everyone. Hi, it's me, Miss Blue, the Oracle. Now, as you know, we are about to dive into Planet Remix. And as we get ready to get into the cipher, I do want to let you know that it is Planet Remix. And a lot of times we cover adult content. So at this time, if you have anyone who's a minor, I would suggest that you put your headset on or get yourself in a place where you can enjoy your time on Planet Remix. But until then, put the babies out, do what you need to do, so we can be responsible while knowing our magic. This show, this information, we dive into a lot of things that are adult content. And so therefore, if you are a minor, I want you to stop what you're doing right now. And I definitely want you to get your parent or your guardian's consent before diving into the remix. Well, enjoy. Enjoy the share. Yeah, and keep knowing your magic. We just got to be responsible while growing up on planet Earth. Peace and greetings. So family, welcome, 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 welcome on in to Planet Remix Radio. I am your host, of course, Miss Blue. The Soulful Oracle. Peace and greetings, everyone. We got a little bit of turbulence getting in the spot tonight, um, but welcome on in. There you guys go. Peace and greetings, everyone. Oh, my goodness. So how is everyone feeling? How are we all doing? Let's get ourselves situated. Let's come on in. So good for us all to be here. Listen, <laughs> it was a little rough getting in, getting in the ship tonight, um, but we have landed safely on one of these planets. How are we feeling? Welcome into the Blue Room. Welcome to Planet Remix Radio. I just wanted to come on and check in with everyone, see how we're all feeling, how we're all doing. Want to give a big shout out to Lance, our moderator, Brother Lance, is in the building. Shouts out to Brother Lance in the building. Welcome on in to all the stars in the building, in the place to be. Brittany Vibes is in the building. Bridget is here. Welcome on in. Sammy is in the building. Welcome in. Thank you all for getting the likes up. Getting the likes up and uh, definitely hitting those hearts, all those good things, because that definitely does, <laughs> you know, let our soul family know, number one, that we are live and that we are here. So I am super duper, super duper excited uh, to be here with everybody. Welcome in. Come on in. Pull up a seat. Welcome in. Erica in the building. Michelle is here. Supremacy is here. Welcome in. Br Priestess Brandy is in the building. Welcome in. Mm -hmm. Ah, Supremacy McCoy. Inglewood. Welcome on in, Inglewood. So good to see you. Much love to you as well. Ah. Oh. What a day. Talk about an energy update. Can we feel this eclipse energy coming in? Like, you know, of course we can. Usually they say three to four days before, three to four days after. You know, if you're really tuned in, and I know you are because you're here. You've been feeling this energy way longer than that. And so we're going to talk about some of those things. I um, went to log into the phone lines. They are having some technical difficulties, so we won't have phone lines tonight. I don't know what I feel about that at the moment, but it's all good. <laughs> it's all beautiful. It's all wonderful, um, you know, because we have many different portals uh, and sacred spaces 
all throughout the cosmos that we can get together. And so we'll start out here and see how things go from here. But I want to say welcome on in. Some of you I haven't seen in a minute and it's good to see you. Miss Megan, Miss Little in the building. Welcome in. Welcome in. Random brand in the building. Tomato is magic. Welcome in the building. Christine is here. Welcome in. How's everybody feeling? Are we ready? Or shall I say this? Ready or not? Here you come for this solar eclipse. A solar eclipse that's happening. Shouts out to all of our soul family. I've been on the phone early this morning. Earthquakes from Thailand all the way New York, New Jersey. That whole kind of eastern seaboard sort of got slapped. Philadelphia earthquakes. 4.8 registered earthquakes happening. It's a little bit of shaky, shaky baby going on on the planet and we can feel it. Shaky, shaky baby is happening. So we are moving, we are moving at a high rate of speed through the photon belt and things are changing. And just like they're changing on the outside, we know they're changing on the inside on the inside. And this is something I really want us all to be prepared for. We've talked about it. By the way, shout out to Self Invested. Let me ring the bell. Let me ring the bell. Ring the bell for Self Invested University, S-I-U in the building. Because we did a lot of this and we covered a lot of this work going on. As you know, it is... You know, Self-Invest at University, the class that we've been going through, this six-week course, we've been really diving deep and kind of getting our hands. And when I say hands, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about all of our senses, all of our clairs, all of our knowledge, all of our spirit kind of in, in the work when it comes to frequency and frequency expansion, not just what it looks like, what it feels like, but how to do it, how to do it on ourselves, how to understand it, how to understand it from a perspective uh, from within and also what it feels like to give and receive this as well. Yeah. Yeah. So welcome on in. And greetings to all the self-invested. Also, shouts out to the divine priestess, to all the divine priestess in the building as well, too. Good to see you. And all of our international listeners from all over the world that is joining us live, or if you're joining us from the past and you have traveled to the time, such as the future, to join us right now, or if you are coming from the future to this present moment as now, we welcome you in and thank you for joining us, as well as our new listeners who might have stumbled upon or maybe someone sent you an invite. You are in the right place. So, yeah, Connecticut as well got hit. That's right. Bridget says, we had an earthquake in Connecticut today. I was at work with a session with a client and felt the building swaying. And I was on the fourth floor. It was scary for real, but I'm grateful it wasn't serious. Yeah, we're grateful for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of powerful things there. You were on the fourth floor. We got 44 portals, gateways, things opening in the cosmic sky all over. DNA upgrade, right? Physical DNA, spiritual DNA, upgrade, downloads, all kinds of shifts that are happening in the sky. And it's really just to put us in alignment for all that is 
to come. For all that is to come. Brother Lance says, why do I feel our higher selves will automatically come online after this eclipse? The Christos consciousness. It's a very good question. For some of us, our Christos consciousness is already online. But you're right. We will begin to start having access. But it is not by osmosis. I want you to understand that this is. It's not a process that will happen by osmosis, meaning you do nothing. You are conscious of nothing. You are not aware of nothing and something just clicks. I mean, that would be nice. We could wake the whole planet up to that consciousness. But I really, really do not feel that it will go down like that. There were some people who will sleep through this entire thing and only see it as a celestial event that they were able to witness out in the sky. And there will be others who have been on the verge of wanting to shift, wanting to change, knowing something deep within their spirit and their heart needs to evolve some kind of way and they will get their answer and you will get your answer. But it's a lot for us to be able to receive. It is the time that you can receive. You can receive and a lot of things will come out of this. I'm going to share a little bit of this story as we get into this. Welcome everyone on in. Let's go ahead and get those likes up. Definitely feel your presence and your energy. Oh my goodness. It's such a beautiful vibration to always be in the presence of every single one of you here. And you bring so much love and light with you. And I know that you're carrying that with you as well as your consciousness all over the planet, everywhere you reside. And I give thanks for that. I give thanks for us. So we're going to talk about that. We'll, 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 we'll talk about that. We'll unpack some of those things and, and dive into those questions. But I do want to take a check in with everyone and to see how are you feeling? How are you doing? How are you feeling? Have you checked in with yourself today? Have you did a little bit of dropping down? I kind of call it drop down and get your eagle on. But really, I'm talking energetically. Can you drop down in your body? I'm talking deep within your body. I'm talking about deep like you're coming into your solar plex, like you are sitting in the seat of your soul. You're resting comfortably there. And you're checking in with all of your bodies, all of your bodies, not just your physical body, your energetic body, your mental body, all of your bodies. Making sure that you are grounded, you are standing solid, solid, solid in you, and you're open, and you're open. Just take a moment to do that. I've been doing a lot of breathing, a lot of meditating today. Yesterday was a portion of... I'm not going to be that arrogant, but a portion of my eclipse. I got the lesson a little early. So for those of you doing the work, for those of you who have your soul tries that you're working with, know that once you take your position, whatever that is, as a mother, as a father, wherever you've been, a lot of times you will receive the lesson ahead of time. 
ahead of time. And sometimes you'll get a double dose. <laughs> not wishing that on anyone and certainly not myself, but I did. I got an eclipse yesterday. And I want to say to all of the soul family who sold up, showed up in astral magic. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that we were able to come together and I was able to share with you in real time a very powerful lesson for me at this particular time. At this particular time. Never be only on the quest so much that you forget to grow and learn. These are humble reminders. They are reminders that I love to welcome in for myself. But I'm never going to BS you. That was an eclipse for me. But it really had nothing to do with the parties and the people sort of involved. But it was very personal. It was very intimate. But it, it allowed me to see how I navigate in certain areas of my life. And why? And why? And where I have become too comfortable sometimes in being quiet, as much as I run my mouth, where I'm being quiet in places, being comfortable in places where I don't need to be. Where I don't need to be. And it has nothing to do with fear of pushback because we live in a world of duality. We speak about this all the time. And like I've told you guys, you know, you can get to that place of some call heaven on earth or Nirvana, but it's going to be based on your frequency and also based on what you're putting out and what you're receiving. What are you building? Have you built your kingdom? Kingdom come, thy will be done. It cannot unless you build it. But if you're interested, find your way to Astral Magic and you can listen to the replay. I, I have done a lot of releasing and reflecting on my breath and meditating, not on the situation. Because when you come face to face with these situations, you have one or two choices of what you can do. You can face it, make a decision, take action and move on it. You can ignore it and get the consequences from it. It's up to you. And this is a lot about what the ancients and our ancestors talked about when it came to eclipses. And so in many cultures, this is the time that they talked about when the sun will die. The sun dies. The sun is killed by the moon or the moon swallows the sun. It's many versions from a frog swallowing the moon from the god Apep. Uh, 
you know, killing the moon or attempting to turning into the serpent? Why do you think NASA is la- is launching rockets on the day of the eclipse and they're ro- launching three rockets? Now, they have their own reason for launching it, but we know every culture, every civilization, hundreds and hundreds of years from now, there will be someone who read the book. And as they're reading this ancient mythology, what we're living and what we're doing becomes their ancient mythology that they are studying and that they are understanding about how we live and the signs and symbols and what they're a representation of. And how we handle these phenomenons or these moments in history and time, these astrology, astronomy moments that were happening on the planet. And so you can look at the Native Americans our brothers and sisters native and how they understood this as this time of the sun and the moon. They understood the sun to be the, the, the great grandfather. And they recognized that he, the grandfather would be going through this pilgrimage to the underworld. And as the grandfather was going through this pilgrimage through the underworld, they were to do their due diligence, whether that was, you know, beating the drums, some cultures, some believe to sit in silence, to be fasting and to be, you know, in this great reverence of being in the presence to be able to witness this, not to look at it, but to know, to hold that hope that the grandfather would make it through this moment. So my point that I'm telling you here is through eons, this is something that we have experienced on the planet. We have now come into a time where this function and these things that are happening, as I told you guys a month ago, as we prepped our way from the beginning of the year to this moment, this is the time of your transformation. This is the rise of you. And so for those four and a half minutes, there's a part of you that will die if you surrender and that part of you is your ego or what we understand the ego to be. I'm going to speak textbook. I'm not going to get into some of the SIU stuff that we talk about. That would be a whole lecture and we're not doing that. But the ego gets a chance to die and to be reborn again. There's so much healing energy that is available. And for some of us, that's what we need. We need physical healing for the body. For others, we need a shift in our consciousness or an expansion in our consciousness. We have been locked in this box. We have long moved away from this fantasy. This fantasy that we're all going to get along and we're all going to love each other. That has never been the point. Or to carry hate. Personally, I don't care what anybody else does. Do it. If it makes you happy, do it. You will be in the lower dimensions of earth fighting. 
when all along the real enemy is within. It's within. And all that we're creating, and notice I said creating. I know there's some of you that may be in the place that you want to get there. But I want you to finally get a hold <laughs> that it's your life and you get to live it the way that you want to live it. And if something is not working, you owe it to yourself to find another way. Find another way. This is a part about the work. You have to find another way. You cannot be so stuck in your ways to say, this is not working. Things are not going the way I want. I am not in the frequency or the vibration I want to be in. And yet, I don't want to find another way. I want to hold my way. You deserve to live the life that you desire. And it's possible for everyone. I got an email and someone asked me the question, I want, how do I change the world? I said, well, the world is going to stop for a moment. You change the world when you change and expand your consciousness. Otherwise, you stay stuck. You know, back in the day, we would say stuck like Chuck. Huh, go figure. I dated someone once named Chuck. Well, his name was Charlie, but they called him Chuck. Stuck like Chuck. No one can tell you anything. You don't want to step outside your comfort zone. You don't want to be uncomfortable. You don't want to be pushed. You want to do it my way, as the song goes. You get to. And there comes a level of responsibility with that my way. There is a level of responsibility with it. But this is the opportunity. This is a opportunity that's available for everyone. Everyone gets this opportunity. And for most of us, it will be once in a lifetime. Yes, we will get an eclipse. The eclipse will happen. Always. The eclipse will always happen. Stay focused. Stay grounded. Stay open. Because the clues have been given to you. If you go back to March the 25th, those themes in your life is there. Whether you had someone pull up your chart or not, you can look in your life and you can see where this eclipse is really giving you that opportunity. And we talked about this in the other show I did about two weeks ago. There's going to be some doors that get the close forever. You know how they say forever, ever, forever. You get to shut it. Never let it back open again. You get the opportunity when those four minutes are coming to get out of patterns, patterns that we have brought from past lifetimes, patterns that we have been indoctrinated into, patterns that we have been placed in through pain, patterns that we have been forced into, Patterns that we so unconsciously allowed ourselves to be 
in that are not serving us. These patterns are everything from our relationships to the damn words that come out of your mouth. Speak truth, the power, your power. You get a chance to have a whole new world, your new world, and you get a chance to build it brick by brick like a mason. Get that 33, get that 44, get that 55. You get to build it. You get to do it. You get a chance to come face to face with God and recognize whatever you identify that as, that that is you. Your God particle can become activated. We have got to stop thinking of these things to live outside of who we are. It's within. It is within. It is within. It's an initiation that we're going through. We were talking about this in self-invested, going from the initiate to the adept. Some will be left behind. They won't know it. So that's a good thing. It's kind of like blocking somebody else on the gram and they tell you, oh, we are not going to notify the person that you put them on notice. So put yourself on notice, on a beautiful, loving notice. So you can finally rise to the occasion of yourself. Recognize that it's your life at any time you can jump in and participate. At any time you can get in this thing. It's like playing double dutch. How many people here used to jump double dutch? You know, I'm a Brooklyn girl at heart. Shout out to all of my Brooklyn crew. And we go one up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two up, two, three. You know, it's double Dutch. You got to get in alignment. And once you jump in, you can't get so excited that you didn't trip, you didn't fall. You can't get that excited. You have to stay focused because it's about to speed up. It's about to start going faster. And you have to be mindful of your feet, your hands, the rhythm, the flow, the energy. And if you think about it too much, it's a wrap. So as the song goes, don't think about it too much, too much. You can't think about it. This is not a brain thinking activity. This is a mission for the higher self. The higher self has to get into this mission. The higher self has to rise to this occasion. And you can't block that. You can't eclipse that. You don't want to be the person. You don't want to be the moon. You don't want to eclipse yourself. We talked about a theme. I want to say that was two years ago. And I told you guys, F it. Bet on yourself. You got to start betting on yourself. You got to start betting totally on yourself. Doesn't mean that we don't work with other people and we don't connect because that's the beautiful thing about being able to come together. That's 
that's always going to be a need and a necessity to be there. You're not abandoning yourself because you are learning how to love yourself. You are learning what the true essence of know thyself really mean. That's not abandonment. That doesn't put you in an abandonment nation. That allows you to rise and to raise up a nation. Because if you recognize yourself as the creator in your reality of what is happening, and remember the reality starts before it gets to the matter. The reality starts in the unseen world. By the time it gets here, that reality is over. You got to allow yourself the opportunity to grow. Some people will be leaving jobs, leaving relationships, changing things about who you are, how you show up, changing your friendships and your connections. And this is not because you hate We have to get out of, I have to destroy where I came from in order for me to move to where I want to be. And so now I got to talk down. I got to say these negative things about all of this stuff that has served me so well and been there to support me. I have to destroy that in order for me to move on. This is a corrupted mind. And it's one that we have seen throughout our history and our culture. They have done it in every civilization. Uh, Going back to ancient Egypt, this is the reason they went to the Sphinx to blow the nose off and try to tear down the statues. Anytime someone comes in, they try to destroy the artifacts that are really uh, the essence of the people and the time of where it is. And this is where this has been impressed upon us lifetime after lifetime. And we feel if I don't want to be in this relationship, I have to hate the person I was in the relationship with. I have to hate everything connected with that and know that none of that was any good for me. Hmm. For some of you, it wasn't. But it was good while it lasted. We have to learn how to take our lessons from these situations and begin to move on. Truly learn how to move on. Learn how to forgive. Remember, forgiving is forward giving. It is an opportunity for you to open up the pathway for yourself to move forward. We think that if we say we must forgive something, somehow we are saying whatever happened, that it was okay. Listen, you're worth more than a forgiveness. There are some people sitting around mad for their whole life, not speaking to their mother, not speaking to their father, not speaking to their children, not speaking to their friends because they are waiting on a forgiveness that will never come. Not in the way that you want forgiveness to come. And so many of us have been in a place been in a place where we're in denial. See, this is where the eclipse come in. We want to think about everything, but we don't want to think about anything that has to do with our lives and what we're responsible for. We don't want to focus on none of that. 
None of that. We don't want any of that. We don't want no smoke. We're going to pretend it doesn't exist. We're going to pretend that we don't need to fix this shit in the house. We're going to pretend that our children got the things that they need and they don't. We're going to pretend like we're taking care of our health. We're going to pretend like we are doing the things in our minds that we're saying out of our mouth. We're going to pretend like everything is perfect and everything is okay. We're going to pretend like we're not in pain most of the time whether that's physically or whether that's mentally, we're going to pretend like all is well. We're not going to acknowledge it. We're not going to bring our consciousness to it. And for a lot of people, they end up living their whole life that way and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Because they are choosing at this particular time on their path in their journey not to be conscious of who they are. So this isn't about forcing people to wake up. So, you know, this this vision of everybody's going to get downloaded this shit and we all going to be get into our Christ consciousness. That's not going to happen because the Christ consciousness is only a part of the pathway. This is why they even tell you, what does it say? Um, first you must go through Jesus, then go through to get to the father. Because Jesus represents the day-to-day walk of the sovereign being, of the person, of the physical being on the planet. Christ is when you can walk that walk and now you're ready to ascend to something higher. You're not going to get to something higher. If you do not open yourself up. Now, I realize for some people, because I'm not in the mood for a lot of foolishness tonight. And yes, I see you. And I know why you're here. But I'm not in the mood for that. But I will tell you, that this is a beautiful time to be alive. It's a beautiful time to be alive. Beautiful time to be alive. And there's so much that's before us at this time. And all that is required is for you to be open to receive. To be open to receive. To be open to receive. And it's there. And it's there. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about that just a little bit and touch on it. I know so many of you are doing your work and so you are aware of what's happening. I wanted to give you a little bit of touch again and a reminder in case you didn't hear the other shows when we talked about this. I am going to ask that we get those likes up. We have more than 140 plus people in the Blue Room alone. Um, so that we can let our soul family find us and know that we're here. So if you feel called to, if you're receiving this message, that you hit that like button, as well as also subscribe to the channel. Yeah. So how we feeling? How we feeling? How we really doing? How we doing? I do want to take questions, (laughs) although right now the system is down. I tried to log in earlier. That took me a little while to even come over here. 
So maybe I'll take questions from chat if we have any questions. If they're, if they're not, you know, I would love to, um, for us to connect a little bit more and uh, talk about it. But um, you feel much better now, Zara. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad that we are in that space and that place of raising our frequency, feeling a little bit better and doing all the things that we need to get done to make it happen. To make it happen. Filled with gratitude. Thank you, special kind of wonderful. I love that name. Absolutely. Ready and open to receive. I don't know how you're going to be celebrating on the eclipse, if you're going to celebrate it at all. I know I'm going to be with family. I probably will fast for that entire day. I'm going to be doing some work um, as well prior to that in the Akasic Records and just kind of being in that space of fasting um, and uh, yeah, just kind of really being, being sort of centered and grounded and in that place of stillness. Like I said, there were some powerful things that took place. I will tell you all this. It happened last night. It had to do with Brother Bobby Hemet sending him so much love. And so uh, something that I witnessed and I shared my thoughts on that. Plus, we had some beautiful dialogue um, with the Soul Family afterwards. And those are the times that I live for. But I also thank you all for, you know, us being there for each other to be able to open up and have that space. Yeah, want to say give a big shout out to the moderators in the building, Mr. Dante in the building, moderating the room, Brother Lance as well in the building, moderating, Lola Falana as well, our other moderator in the building, and uh, yeah, just sending so much love, yeah, so much love, yeah, and shout out to the Blue Room, shout out. So I'm going to take your questions and we can do this uh, one or two ways. If you are on the text line and I'm going to give you that text line number, if the moderators will put it in the blue room, then what I will do is I will take your question from the text line. Text your question in and then I will answer your question. We can do readings from there um, as well. We're going to do this for a little bit here and, and, and see, and see. No, no phone lines tonight. Uh, no phone lines tonight. So, but you can text your question in and I will get your question. So, mods, if you can do me a favor, the superstar moderators, if you can put that. <laughs> you going to run my bill up. Hey, at this point. We can run it up because we may not be on this text line for long. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Y'all are going, y'all are, y'all are going in. I can't even keep up with the conversation, but yes, if you go back, um, lot, lots of things, uh, to be able to do on the solar eclipse. And maybe we can talk about some rituals that can be done. You know what? We we might not be able to go to the text line. Why my phone say I don't have no. Listen. We might put we might have to put the questions in the room because my phone say I got two phones. But my phone say right now my phone is letting me know that we got about one percent. About 1%. Mm -hmm. 1%. Thank you for that, Brittany. Brittany, yes, that's right. If you go back and listen to the last share that we did, I believe it was on Instagram. I gave out some rituals there. But right now, you can get on the text line to send your question. 512-359-3414. Uh, that's 512-359-3414. You will have to opt in if you're not on the text line. Um, and if you opt in, uh, then I will be able to uh, answer your question. Answer your question. Yeah, yeah. 
Y'all are so beautiful. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So let's go to Christine. Christine has her question, and Christine says, Hi, Miss Blue. Can you see what message the hummingbirds are trying to tell me? The hummingbirds are so amazing and incredible, such a beautiful spiritual symbol. Whenever you see the hummingbird, you know, the hummingbirds are kind of like the bumblebee. You know, they are a phenomenal species, you know, that really aerodynamically when you see the hummingbird, it, it, it kind of takes you in a trance. Because it's like, how is the hummingbird even able to fly? How are they even able to fly with that little wing and their bodies? And they can move forward and backwards and up and down and all around. Seeing a hummingbird really just lets you know, number one, um, the hummingbirds are I consider them to be the peacocks of the sky. And they are really, really sort of kind of fortunate symbols when you see them. But they really, really are connected to healing, to healing. They bring a healing vibration and they are a, um, they bring a healing vibration to you. They are tuners. So whenever you're in front of a hummingbird, know that what they're doing is they are, they are in your aura. They're drawn to your aura. And a lot of times they will come and give you the vibration you need to attune through entrainment um, your frequency and your vibration to help you raise your frequency. And sometimes we see hummingbirds like after maybe we've had like a burst of energy. It could be sadness um, or we can be really, really excited so they can come and they can they can give us confirmation. But for a hummingbird to be in your auric field, you know, because it needs to be at least about four to eight city blocks and a hummingbird to be able to come very close to you is letting you know that your frequency and vibration is one that they can, they can penetrate and they can come in and come in. That means you're calm. That means you're center. And so the gift that they give you because they vibrate at a high frequency, you know, they kind of on that three, six, nine, they on a very high frequency level. They are training, helping you to train your energy to raise your frequency higher, 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 higher. And, uh, they also are a sign of quick recovery. So anyone, you know, if anyone's dealing with any kind of illness, if you've been ill or not feeling well, or maybe you had a cold, a flu, or, you know, any of those things. And I just say that lightly because there's no such thing as colds anymore. But if you are feeling some kind of energy in your body, the hummingbird will come along uh, to really help your frequency so that you can raise that frequency and energy and give you that blessing. So that's a divine blessing. Please take some notes. I hope you, if you don't have a picture of that hummingbird, these are things to remember because this will become a part of your pantheon. Usually when hummingbirds show up or any of the spiritual animals and you guys Listen to this and remember this, make a note and then come back, you know, do your due diligence and be, you know, you be the magic maker in this situation and let me know. Because when animals start to enter in, especially during this cycle that we're in, these animal totems will stay with you for at least three years. They are going to be your animal totems that are with you. So animal totems are showing themselves in big, bold ways right now. And so there you go, Christine. Uh, I hope that gave you some clarity with that beautiful, beautiful hummingbird. That hummingbird, they are so gorgeous. Okay. And so many of you, Jerry said, I saw a hummingbird outside my window right after my mom transitioned. Wow. 
beautiful and ashe to your mom. Ashe, ashe, ashe. All right, let's go to this. This is from Mama Gail. Mama Gail said, I was watching a show and they were talking about dragonflies. And then I went outside and a dragonfly flew right in front of me. What is the message? Well, this is going to echo that theme for you, uh, Gail. Number one, this is one of your animal totems. And also, let me give you some sparkles. The reason I'm going to give you some sparkles for this dragonfly, because back in ancient time, you know, the dragonfly would show up and it was sort of like a badge of honor. You understand it was a badge of courage, a badge of honor. You know, it's kind of like how now in our services, our military services, you will see people decorated and they will have these emblems. Um, on their um, clothing um, and you will see that for their accomplishments or even when we think about in academia when you're getting ready to graduate from college and you belong to particular clubs and particular schools and all of these different things then what's going to happen is uh, you will get little pins you will get um little symbols to show those achievements of those things. So that dragonfly flying in front of you allowed you the opportunity to know that, you know, in video games, what they call it is you have cleared a level. You have cleared a level that your soul has been struggling with uh, to integrate in your life. So there was some integration, some healing, some understanding, some transformation, some real alchemy and transformation that has taken place that has gone on in your life. And so this was your way of seeing that animal totem to see. You know, one thing I will say, when you look at all of the sacred texts, you will see these signs and symbols there. A lot of times what often happened, this is why we have to have scribes of the current times and we have to be keepers of our own records. This is why I tell you guys, document, document, document for yourself is because we see these things and we don't think they mean anything and they don't because it depends on what frequency you're vibrating on. But when we go back and we study ancient texts, our ancestors understood that all is truly one, meaning that everything is interacting with everything and all things mean something, something. If you're able to be the scribe, if you're able to be the student, the initiate, the adept, to do the metaphysics and to understand how you can bridge that gap from the spiritual to the physical throughout all the worlds and pull them together for a greater understanding. This is how you expand your consciousness and your awareness. Yeah. So there you go, Mama Gail. That's a beautiful sign. Beautiful sign. Beautiful, beautiful sign. All right. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm Yaya says, Miss Blue, can you see any deficiencies in my body? Any suggestions of herbs or supplements that I can take to under, uh, um, I, I was getting ready to say undercome, overcome this deficiency uh, that is in my body? You're welcome, Gio. Love to you and Mom Gail. Let me see. Let me see. Any deficiencies? I'm going to do a scan on you really quick and see. If you do have any uh, deficiencies, any deficiencies. Hmm. 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 Your energy looks good, but some of the things that I will, I, I will, I will talk to you about and you let me know, um, one of the things that I think you could definitely benefit from 
because I see a little bit in your, when I'm looking at your auric field and particularly right around your sacral chakra and your solar plex, um, sort of in your abdomen region in that, um, if you've been tired, uh, you experience some fatigue, um, if it's kind of hard for you to, to remember things on the spot, um, hmm, hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Any kind of um hmm. Any kind of loss of sensation in your hands, like little tingling. You know how sometimes it feels like uh you uh sat on your hands or you know your feet go a little numb. I I feel like if if I want to give you give you something uh that I can tell you uh and I see you saying yes this is a yes is that you need to get some vitamin vitamin B1 this is what's coming up for me um is that I feel like your body is not processing vitamin B1 um and you need to get a good um source of vitamin B1 because it needs to be able to, to, to kind of penetrate and stay in the body. Uh, if you email me at question for blue, I can send you some recommendations of that, but this is what I feel I'm picking up with you. It just kind of took me to this particular area and definitely drinking more water. But one of the things that I'm going to give you, Yaya, is that you, you have to do more meditating and get out of your mind. Uh, you got to get out of your mind. You're, you're really, really kind of burning up a lot of your energy, your nervous system, kind of, you've been doing a good job, but it's kind of going up and down, up and down, up and down is you really need to get out of your mind and just kind of relax, you know, start thinking about those things that you're worried about. Because I feel like when I get in your energy, I immediately hear, and this is what the guides are telling me, is that you are carrying what they call mother fears, mother fears. And usually mother fears has to do with children. Mother fears have to do with how we care for, whether it's our spouse, our mate, um, um, whether it's a role or a position that we hold with others, but there is some sort of fear, um, mother fear, uh, going on that you have there. And so, you know, this is what your, my guides are telling me that you need to move more into a solution and be more proactive, uh, in these areas and to leave the worrying alone uh, to be able to come out of that because they, they're, they're showing me there is a solution for this. It's a solution right now. You can't see the solution. Um, but if you can calm yourself down, do some meditating, do some breathing, some deep breathing, you know, and just kind of relax. So your nervous system can calm down. Then you can drop down in your body and the solution will start to come to you. Work with your guides, uh, work with your ancestors, work with your higher self. That solution is there right now. It, it seems like everything you're trying is not working. And it's only because you're in the wrong vibration. When you get into a higher vibration, you will have multiple paths and options uh, that will bring you a solution. So no more mommy fear. Okay. Nothing, nothing to worry about. There is a solution there and there will be people to support you in this. I see this because your guides are bringing people to me. And incidentally, one person has like a SUV. So I don't know what a vehicle has to do with it, but I see like a SUV, you know how you see, um, people who have the rounded, um, driveway, I see a SUV, uh, pulling up, uh, uh, <laughs> SUV pulling up, uh, in front. So there is a solution. Whenever I see a car, sometimes it's a horse, 
But most of the time I see a car, unless I'm working with the tarot, then I'll start to see tarot symbols. But right now I see a car and it's an SUV. If I get a little closer, I probably could tell you what kind of SUV, um, but it's an SUV pulling up. This SUV is pulling up. Uh, 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 okay. It's your nephew. Okay. Okay. Well, there you go. So there you go. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for the question. All right. Let's go. Misty says, do my ancestors have anything in particular, uh, that they want to say to me? Do the ancestors have anything in particular? Let's see if we can call in your ancestors, Misty. Misty. Okay. Okay. So you do have some ancestors that are coming forward for you, Misty. Some of the ancestors is coming forward. It's so funny. I got to look at something. I actually got to look something. I'm gonna look at my notebook here, cause they they got something that I gotta I gotta really be focused on here. I love this. I love this. We may have to do more of this. I used to do this back in the day when I was, you know, but I'm not a, you know, anymore. <laughs> you know how the song goes. Used to do a lot of this. <laughs> but, but I'll do this. I'll do this now. Let's let's see. Ooh, hoo. all right, Misty, 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 Misty. Hmm, 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 I, I want to know if you had any problems at birth. Were there any problems that you had at birth, Misty? Like when you were born, did you have any problems at birth? It could be minor problems or anything at birth, um, but it feels like, mm, it feels like, give me a minute, give me a minute. Give me a minute. Okay, so here is here is something that's 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 coming up for you. I don't know if you uh, recently had a birthday or coming up, but I see a cake, and on this cake there are forty four candles, and that's interesting because I was doing some research on these forty four portals uh, that are opening up. Uh, but these are forty four uh, candles. 44 candles on a birthday cake. So I, I don't know if you had a birthday, if someone in the family is about to have a birthday or a birthday is coming up. Uh, the other thing that I see who is coming forward, this would be an elder. This would be a woman. Also, I want to know who or someone in your family who has something to do with, um, with medicine that maybe work in a field. Either they work in a hospital, they had a field in a hospital because I see someone, they could have been a nurse, they could have been a doctor, they could have uh, uh, been a security guard, uh, they could have worked in a hospital or had a role in a hospital, but I'm seeing that. Their main message for you at this particular time, Misty, is that you have got to learn how to trust yourself. There is some situations that are happening with you and uh, two things that they're showing me is two people ice skating and dancing together. And that tells me that they this is a relationship. And so some of the things that you have going on has to do with your relationship. Uh, and this appears to be a relationship, like an intimate relationship. And so your ancestors are here to let you know that they support you in whatever this decision is that you are making. And it could be a friendship, but whatever this relationship is, it is one that is close to you. It is one that caused you uh, great happiness and sometimes and, um, oh, wow. My mom was super sad and alone at my birth. Oh, this is what this is. And yes, I had your 44th birthday. So there you go. This is divine confirmation for you. So know also that there 
They're telling you that it is time for you to take a look at these relationships in your life. I also see something else. Oh my goodness, Missy. I see a bag full of money and I don't see that often. So there is something coming for you where you will be coming into some sort of idea, something that you've been working on or thinking about. It looks like that bag has been empty for you, but it looks like that bag, it's going to get nice and full. So if you've been having some struggles in the area where it comes from finances, that is going to open up a windfall for you. You're going to have some things come in. So you definitely need to stay open, stay grounded. Don't go into panic mode. Don't start, you know, feeling like you're desperate. Um, but really, really just get into the place of being grounded and staying open um, because there's there's so much for you, so much that is going to be coming for you. That's going to turn a lot of things around, a lot of things. But primarily, this has to do with the relationship, you know, that is there and um, and things to come. So there you go. There you go, Misty. There you go. Let's see. Um, all right. Let's go to, I believe it's Deanne. So Deanne says, healing pools of love. Miss Blue, sometimes I have a lot of pressure in my forehead right behind my third eye. Not sure what that is. It is it good? Well, you know, things are not good. Things are not bad, but things are presenting themselves and we get to determine how that plays out for us. So the number one thing that I want to tell you is that this is this pressure behind your third eye is because you're not listening to your intuition. You're not listening to your intuition and you're allowing your mind to sort of kind of hit that override button in your life. And so you're second guessing everything that you're doing, absolutely everything. And I see you, you know, when I see, I see you just sort of kind of, you know how they do those television shows in the grocery store and they give the contestants like 10 minutes, well, not 10, five minutes and for them to go and race and get as many groceries as they can possibly get. I can't remember the celebrity's name, but she actually took people to the grocery store and allowed them to go grocery shopping. I think it was Suki. And she said, you got five minutes, get anything that you want, put it in the cart and everything in the cart is yours. And this is what I'm feeling from you, hailing pools of love is, is what happening. You are in this constant race of just gathering all of these things gathering, whether it's information, uh, whether it's collecting things, whether it's something someone told you to do and you're just gathering, whether it's taking all of these classes, whether it's, ga and you're gathering all of these things and you're rushing, 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 rushing. You got it in the cart. And after you check out, you don't do anything. You don't do anything. You're waiting to go back in and go shopping again. And spirit is saying, it's time for you to stop shopping. It's time for you to go back. It's time for you to look at what you have. Look at the work that you've done. It's time for you to celebrate who you are. Celebrate where you've come, how far you've come on your path, the things you've overcome. And now it's time to get to work. It doesn't mean that you won't take a class here or, you know, we all should be continuously learning on this journey. We all should continuously keep learning on this journey. But in the same token, we have to also get out there and do the work. I am always pushing you guys to do that. Get out there, put it to work, test it out. Don't allow these things to die in your mind. Don't allow these things to just fall on deaf ears within yourself. It is time for you to begin to getting out there and to see these message out, these things that you have done, these things you want to build, these things you want to do to get out in the world and start doing them instead of looking for what you don't have. You know, what I'm being shown is you have to start looking for 
what you have and having gratitude for those things that you have, having gratitude for those things. Here's another thing that I see is that you need to clean your kitchen out. You need to clean your kitchen out. You need to do some feng shui on your kitchen. You know, this is one of the main opening portals inside of our sacred space. And so any of those dishes that are broke, that are cracked, uh, that are warped from the dishwasher or just from being old or, you know, the color has faded out, get rid of those things, donate those things, give things away. Because what spirit is saying is you have to get back into the spirit of giving. You have to get back into the spirit of giving and you have been sitting in the position of lack too long. You understand you're rich in your mind and you're lacking in your heart. So get back in your heart, get back to that place of you, of loving, of leading, of showing up and being and doing the things in the world that you want to do. So this pressure that you're feeling is your higher self. It's your higher self saying, listen to your intuition, tune down the noise, all the external noise, and learn how to go within. You have to learn how to trust yourself. And before we learn how to trust ourselves, we have to learn how to listen from within to that voice, to that higher self within ourselves, and know that it cannot lead us wrong. It will not lead us wrong. It is the divine voice and it is your birthright. So there you go. I hope that does you well. Thank you. Let's see. Let's go to the next one. And I'm taking questions from the text line. Taking questions from the text line. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, y'all got me with questions tonight. Let's see. Mhm. 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 Let's go to Erica Dawson. I just want a general message. I'll give you a general message, but let me tell you, there ain't nothing general about you, baby. Nothing is general about you. Immediately coming into your energy, the first thing that I get is I get this energy of a scribe, of a somebody who is documenting, somebody who is writing, someone who is, you know, really invested in um, the records, like a recorder, you understand, like a powerful recorder that like in ancient times, how the poets and the writers would write and, you know, this energy of like a writer. And so, One of the things that I will tell you that spirit is saying is that it's time for you to decide if this is going to be something you're going to invest your time in and take serious, or are you still going to be hiding in the dark? Because immediately in order for me to get to you, I had to go through a dark velvet burgundy curtain and I had to open that curtain. And anytime that I'm doing a reading for someone and I have to open that. It's kind of like the Wizard of Oz. I have to see who is behind the curtain. It tells me that you're hiding. You're hiding yourself. You're hiding parts of who you are. And spirit is saying that it's safe now. You can come out. It's safe now. Some of the things that you were hiding from, those doors are getting ready to be closed. They will close with the eclipse if you will allow them to be closed because what the guides are showing me is that they will close it for you, Erica. They're going to close those doors. They're going to close them shut. They're going to lock them. The keys are going to be thrown away. They will lock those doors for you. All the shame, all the guilt, all the hurt, all the punishment, all the embarrassment, all of that is going to go away. You can let all of that go away and you can come out now. You can come out. So there you go. There you go. Let's go to the next person. Yeah, let's go to the next person. Let me see. Mm, mm. Let me see. Let's see. Let's see. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, mm, 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 mm. 
Okay, let's go to Brenda. Let's go to Brenda. Uh, she says, hi, Miss Blue. Can you give me some insight on a particular spirit that has been coming to me for support? She transitioned from childbirth a couple of years ago at 44. I feel her spirit strongly. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Let's see. So this is a spirit. And because you're telling me this is a spirit, I'm assuming this is someone you don't know. Now, often when spirits will come to us, uh, there's only one or two reasons that spirit will come to you. Number one, uh, a lot of times spirits will come to us when they have had a situation that has happened for them and they are looking for a solution. They are looking for an answer. And so one or two things have happened. Either A, you have experienced a miscarriage, uh, Brenda, or two, you are in the position where you want to work with babies. I instantly, Spirit is giving me the word doula, uh, something to do with the doula, um, maybe getting into some work with working with babies, children, or either mothers, um, because this is this is the reason Spirit is bringing this up. If you're if you're in the blue room, please let me know. Please let me know. If you guys are in the blue room, please let me know, um, because this is going to help with um, me continuously going. Um, but this is showing some of the things of uh, 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 of you working with a doula working with a doula. So this spirit is around you because the spirit is looking for you to, that this spirit knows that you will have a solution, uh, a solution for them. And so the solution is simply to let them know, especially if you're going to be working uh, in this particular field with children or babies. And if you haven't thought about that, then, uh, oh, Oh, she said, yes, I'm approaching the end of my doula training. So this is perfect. So one of the things that I want you to let, let them know uh, in this doula training uh, is she is now here to support you because she has a message for you. I know you think that you are there to support her, but she is actually here to support you. She is here to support you um, because one of the fears that you have is that something will happen to a mother on your watch, but she's going to be there to help guide you because she understands what things took place when she was giving birth to her child and ultimately she passed. So here she's here as your teacher. Uh, no, she's not seeking justice. This is not an angry spirit, at least not what I'm picking up. She's here to learn. And she's also here to support you, to help you learn some things about what you're doing. And also you can share with her. So I see this as a mentorship uh, relationship between the two of you. And so she's here to help you as you enter into this doula process, um, because, you know, the giving birth is a very magical, miracle uh, experience uh, for women, for men and the children and everyone who is involved uh, in this process of a new life coming into this world. So she's not here seeking justice. Please don't pick that up. If you are, I need you to raise your frequency. She's not here for justice at all. She is here because she wants to assist you. And in the process of assisting you, it will give her if you want to think of it this way, the justice of knowing that she has fulfilled that of helping someone else, but she is at peace. She is making a choice to come by you. Like I said, one or two things, either you uh, had a miscarriage yourself uh, and she's looking for how you will heal or you do some work and working with babies. And I told you spirit was giving me the word doula. So I'm very excited for you. We got a lot of doula mamas uh, here on Planet Remix. So shouts out to you for taking that journey uh, and uh, continue your work. Um, but this is not a trap soul. She is coming and going as she please. Uh, she's not a disgruntled spirit. She's not an angry spirit. She doesn't feel like the hospital did her wrong. These are all the things she's telling me. She doesn't feel like uh, they got there too late. She doesn't feel any of that. She is here to really bring insight and love 
and love and love. Mm -hmm. Does she want, uh, let me see, does she want me to support with her daughter in any way? Does she want me to support? No, uh, that is not your role for you to do that to support. If you feel called to support, you can, but she is not requiring that. Uh, she is not requiring that because their family has a support system, but she's not requiring that, you know, but if your heart feels like, of course, I would say that whether she was alive or, or not alive, if something is telling you in your heart to give support uh, and to be there for support, then you should do that. But she's not requiring that. Remember, when souls come here, they have a understanding. It's on a higher level. And I know this is a hard concept for us to realize, but souls know when the mother is going to abort pregnancies. They also know when there's going to be things like miscarriages, still births, uh, even um, if their mother is going to pass during the time of their birth. Souls understand that. And remember, we're all being born for different reasons. And so one of the things that I would love for us to do in a healthy way, I feel we can approach this, is that we are moving when we are inspired to move from love within our heart, but not out of just the sake of some sort of feeling as though we are feeling sorry in some kind of way. And, and it, it's okay because sometimes we will feel sorry, but allow the inspiration, divine inspiration to be that guide for you and not, oh, because that when we bring victim uh, into a situation, it disempowers everyone, including ourselves including ourselves. So there you go, Brenda. Hopefully that helped you to give you some insight. And uh, you all text me back and let me know. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, oh, oh. So I want to go uh, a Danisha. Adanisha, am I saying it right? Adanisha, I am working on consistency with daily practices to focus my energy, get more connected with myself and manifest my goals. What can help me go further with this as I often fight with discouragement and doubt? What can I do to help myself with this message? Message from my ancestors, spirit guides. Also, I feel like I need to fast. Okay, so I want to talk about this. I want to talk about this message here uh, really, really quick um, because this, this is a good one. This is a good question, and I think we all can definitely learn about this. When you say you're working with um, consistent with your spiritual practice, and focusing your energy to get more connected with myself and manifest my goals. I want you to kind of take a step back. I want you to kind of take a step back on that. And I want you to really look at what you're doing because what I'm getting here is it's, it's giving systematic approach. You're doing this just to get, you're doing this just to get something. I understand you said to focus on yourself, but focus on yourself for what? I want you to get very, very detailed. And I also want you to do more things that help you raise your frequency, you know, raise your frequency. So if you have a morning practice, if that is doing some breath work or some toning, as I've showed you guys, how to tone using your name to tune yourself to your frequency and your vibration, uh, if you want to do meditation in the morning, those things are powerful. They're beautiful. Continue to do that. Now, when it comes towards you manifesting your thing, here's something. I put something out at the beginning of the year. I want to make it a reminder right here. Absolutely, everyone, if you did not get the, now I got to go. Now I got to go to the site. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let me see if I can go. Let me see if I can go there. 
I want you to get the Futuristic Activation 2024, um, the 2024 uh, kit. If you have that kit, that is a life saver. It is one that I use. It is one that work. You can read the reviews. So many people are still getting success. I know we're in the fourth month of the year, but we still have many more months to go. We got 12 months to go is to get that, to download that kit and start working with it. It will put you in alignment so that you can make sure that you get into it. Yes, thank you, Zara. Zara said, great prompts and wisdom and step-by-step -step instructions for you to tap in, to get into a daily flow, not only to help you with manifesting and creating, but also getting yourself in alignment, in a flow uh, to be able to work with. I would recommend uh, definitely getting that as well, as well as working with any of the elements any of the elements, any of the elements uh, that is there. Erica Dawson coming. She said, I used to write all the time before my amputation. Just don't feel like you don't have to write. You can speak. You can do it through pictures. It's so many ways to communicate. So many ways to communicate, um, my dear. But I promise you, so many ways to communicate. Let me go back to you, uh, Dana and Nisha. So I, I'm going to get back to your question. I got to stay focused. Y'all are sending me so many questions. <laughs> okay. Okay. There's a punctuation in my name. Yes. To reach my external goals, but I need to focus less on that. Yes. Focus less on that because you're the creator. But see, when you can sit fully in that seat, that driver's seat of your life, you don't have to worry about if what you want to manifest is going to happen. You won't have to worry about that because you're the creator and you know you're creating it. So you go from the place of being in wonder and disbelief to you go to the place of knowing and being. You understand? You go to that place of knowing and being. That's where you go. That's the place you go to. And then you don't have to worry about, is it going to happen? Is it not? You know that things are in alignment for your greatest and your highest good. Your greatest and your highest good. It's just going to require that you expand your consciousness, expand your awareness in this area. And you can't be so attached to it because then you become the magnet that pushes it away. You understand? Because you're in the wanting state. And anytime you're in a wanting, that's a real frequency. That's a real vibration. Wanting means I never get it. If I want that, if I want that, I don't know, if I want that car, if I want that house, if I want that relationship, if I want that job, then I'm sending out a message. I don't have it, nor will I ever get it. But if I am in alignment and I know that this is something I can get, number one, we, we, we have to have discernment of, are we doing the work to put ourselves in alignment for what we want? Because a lot of times, and I know I have certainly done this on my journey, I wanted things that I wasn't in alignment to even get. I wasn't even ready to receive what I was asking for. You understand? I wasn't even in position to get what I wanted, but I wanted it. I was working towards it. I wasn't in alignment to even receive it. If it showed up on that day, I, I had to do, you know how when, when you have to sign for a package and they come to the door, I would have to say, return the sender. I'm not ready for it. I'm not ready for you to drop off 10,000 vows of liquid magic. I don't have anywhere to put it. But I'm out here wanting 10,000 vows of business to come in. Where are you going to put it? 
So we have to be in alignment and then we have to make sure that we're taking action. We have to make sure we're taking action. And after we take that action, then we have to become, this is where the scientists come in. We have to quantify and measure those results. Is what you're doing getting you the results that you should get? If it's not, then we go back to the creation stage. For those of you who was in self-invested first class, you know that. You got to go back to Kim magic. Know your magic. You go back to the creation stage. You have to go back to the beginning. Because somewhere in there, as Erica Badu, I made a wrong turn somewhere back there. And now I got to figure it out. I got to figure it out. Now we can play the mind game and say, there's no such thing as a mistake. Oh, we're spiritual. Everything is perfect. Everything is this. This is why some of the things that is plaguing people on the planet that's not aware and conscious is also plaguing those of us who have consciousness, which is this mental disturbance. So we're not up for mind games. We are superior beings here. And we are operating from a superior state of understanding and being and doing and creating. And those manifestations have to come. You know, these are things that I've had to check myself with over the years. I can tell you all this so, so sincere and honestly. I'm a slow learner. I was a slow learner and a slow mover and a slow shaker. I took my time and I understood the consequences of giving myself all of this grace. Oh, I'm a firm believer of giving yourself grace and giving yourself space. But also know there's a flip side to that. You will fall behind. We cannot be running a marathon. And all of a sudden I say to you, Lance, you say, I'm a little tired, Miss Blue. And I say, go ahead, Lance, fall back. Take your time. Walk. You can sit on the bench, get you something to drink and do all of that. But guess what? If we're riding bikes, let's say we're riding bikes. I don't want to run. The Peloton is still moving. The group is still moving. So when Lance has finished drinking his water and stretching and relaxing and he get on that bike, you're not catching the Peloton. I don't care how fast you're riding. You're not going to catch the Peloton because you gave yourself grace and space. And I'm not telling you we're in a race with anybody. You can think of the Peloton being the things you want to manifest in your life and things that you're responsible for and the things that you, you, you connect yourself with in your life, not other people. You're going to be behind. This, th these are just laws. And we have to understand that. And I think sometimes we think that we're going to get all this time, but then we want to holler, time ain't real. <laughs> okay. That's an oxymoron. That's an oxymoron. It's not real, but it is a agreed upon if you're going to be doing things that are based on you being in that frequency. Because when you're in a higher frequency, time is not real. This is how we can sit on here and go four hours and it feels like 15 minutes. Because you're in a higher frequency. So if you're getting tired, then it's time for you to go back to the drawing board. If you're not focused, you got to question that. Why am I not focused? Maybe I'm not focused because there's another piece of this I need to focus on. We have to start questioning ourselves as much as we like to question everyone else. 
And we have to invest in ourselves. And by no means am I saying I'm the only place that you can invest in. There are some amazing brothers and sisters out here, many of them right here in Planet Remix, that have many things that can help you. But one of the things you're not going to get around is doing your work. You're not going to get around. Not me, not you, not anybody. It won't happen. So... I want you to do that. And then here's the other thing. Stop being afraid to speak to your mind. It's your mind. What do you mean your mind is saying some shit and telling you it's your mind? It's your mind. <laughs> it's your mind. You can tell your mind, no, we're not doing that. But then here's a spiritual law. I've talked about it for years at this point, over 15 years. If you want to take something out, a thought, an action, a habit, anything, an organ, a limb, you have to put something back in of a higher frequency. Something has to fill that space or just like default, it's going to go back to what it knows. So for every negative thought, write it down. It's a thing. And many of you took this mastermind class I did. I don't even know what year it was. And it's a thing called urban legend. And everyone has urban legends about themselves. I remember when I was a child, we had an urban legend about a house around the corner that it was haunted. And there were dead people in there and people were killing people and dragging them in the house. It was an urban legend. Well, you have urban legends. Sometimes we have great urban legends about people in our towns and our communities and where we live. But we have urban legends about ourselves and we know that every urban legend must be debunked. We learned this growing up as children. We will debunk the urban legend. We're going to investigate it. We're going to get curious about this urban legend. So get curious about why your mind keeps sending you discouraging thoughts. Get very curious about this urban legend, right? You got to know it's an urban legend because your higher self, I've been saying this forever, will never speak to you like that. Absolutely never will your higher self talk to you like that. And nor would the divine, if that be what you call it. Never, ever would it say that about someone so divine, powerful as you. Never. It's an urban legend. So you, my sister, have to do some debunking of these urban legends that you have allowed to crawl in, whether they were from childhood or bad relationships or, you know, uh, just bad habits. Let's just call it what it is. Sometimes we're around people and we want to compare ourselves to everything and we start beating ourselves up and, you know, we have bad habits with ourselves. So you just need to debunk these urban legends debunk them because your energy looks beautiful. I would love for your root chakra to be a little bit more, mm, more expanded, which tells me you worry about things. You worry about money. You worry about finances and how things are going to. And it's time for you also to go back to the drawing board. And when I say go back to the drawing board, not as the knower, but go back as the new beginner. Go back as the new beginner and just allow yourself an opportunity to, to just stand still for a moment. Not a long time, because I promise you, it won't be long. Just sit back for a minute. Sit back and see the fruits of your labor. Because it's going to show you a, a, a clear pathway of what direction 
to move in next, because ultimately that's what you're looking for, uh, is to see. I'm reading you guys' questions. I'm going down the list. So hopefully that helped you. There you go. And yes, Seology is a great show to go back and take um, take a look at. Mm. Let's look at this one. This is Keith Ray. It says, Peace, Miss Blue. A black crow came up to me and looked me in the eye. And two more were there on the ground. Ah, you's a bad mother. Hush your mouth. You know, they talking about shaft. I love it. A black crow, a black, beautiful, jet black crow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about black crows. Let's talk about them. Let's talk about them because most of us, um, we think of crows, we think of Stephen King and we get a little spooked. We get a little spooked. But really, the crows are a sign of transformation. Uh, it's a sign of rebirth. Uh, it is a sign of... Yeah, yeah. You know, somehow I hear that song, I know I've been changed. You know that? That song about, I know I've been changed. And you said there was three black crows there. Whenever you see that number three, you know, it's kind of like when you see something and things happen three times, that would be something. I remember when I wanted to uh, get this car one time, I'm not going to go into the whole deal, but I would always say to myself, I would be at the stoplight and I would see three of them. And I would tell my daughter, that means somebody has a dream. Because I already got the car I wanted. But one day we were at the stoplight and there were three of the same cars. Like there was three Mercedes Benz. All three of them were black. And I told my daughter, I said, oh, this is so beautiful. She said, why? I said, look, one, two, three. Someone has a dream and this is their sign of the dream in front of them. So these three are here. You are looking for change, Ray. You are looking for change in your life at this particular time. And this is the confirmation of the change. That's right. It is also letting you know that there are something because in order to have a rebirth, that means there has to be something that must die or must transform. And of course, we're not speaking physical death, right? But this is about Something, you must let go of something in order to get something else. You must let go of something in order for something else to come in. And you're transitioning into a new phase. One of the things that I see uh, interesting is I see a door, Ray. I see a door. And when you open this door, it looks like a door to a building, to an office. So this is telling me that it has something to do with um, where you work, how you work, uh, if you work for yourself, um, or if you do a little bit of both, you work for yourself and you also work somewhere else, there is some transformation and one of these phases or cycles may be closing out for you, but it's only because something greater is to come. So if this is a direction that you are moving into, uh, then this is a beautiful sign for you to be there, to be in this. And so one of the things that you will carry with you is divine guidance. You know, when you also see these three things, you are getting divine guidance. This means that this is guidance and it's not based on your experience. It's not based on things that you have had happen in your life. This is a divine understanding of things that is coming beyond your higher self that is connected to you. And so 
uh, this is what's coming up for you and seeing those three crows, uh, definitely you want to search that. That's going to be one of your uh, animal totems for the next year. So uh, the next couple of years, actually, next three years here. Uh, so it's, it's going to be a time of transformation and change that is coming in for you. Uh, some of these are much needed changes. Some of these things you are coming to completion of, you're finishing. So it may be a class, it may be something you're you're taking a course in, maybe you're getting a certification in, but um, I don't know, because I see a book, maybe you're going to be starting a class or taking a class. I'm, I'm seeing this, but I see this book, but I feel like it is more of a completion, like you're coming to a completion and you're entering into a new cycle, a new phase. You're closing some things out so new things can start. Uh, that is happening around you. So new things can begin, can begin with you. You know, when you look at the color black, it is such a sophisticated color. So often when this black comes up in a, in, in a sign, in a symbol, uh, it's showing you that it is an, an, an infusion of all light. It is able to absorb every frequency. And so whenever these symbols come up, particularly this black, and you have something, whether it's an animal, like it, it could be an object, it could be anything, you know, a uh, couple of things you want to look at. It's a highly um, creation energy. It's highly creation. It's instant manifestation. But because black sort of holds this element of all the frequencies and colors, if you focus on the lower side or energy of these colors, you will instantly manifest that. If you focus on the higher end, then you will ma instantly manifest that. So be mindful of where you're putting your energy. Be mindful of that, um, of that process of how you process your energy. Be mindful of the most valuable real estate in the world, which is your mind. Be mindful of how you feed your mind and what you allow your mind uh, to enter into what process, what things that you are entertaining or processing with your mind. It also speaks to power. And so, you know, power uh, is, is, is necessary, <laughs> is necessary. And you got the power. You got the power, Ray. So there you go. Hopefully that gave you some insight there on your... On your animal totems and lots of animal totems coming through tonight, um, which is super duper amazing. I am so here for it. I am so here for it. So listen, Soul Family, that is going to do it. I know you all have more questions. I'm definitely going to be coming back on. I love it when we get together to do these readings. I want you all to do me a favor. We have more than 200 people in the Blue Room at this particular time. It would do my heart so well to show your support. It would be supporting me, supporting this work, supporting the platform. If we can get some likes there, don't forget to like, share, uh, and come back and share your high, your high frequency thoughts and takeaway uh, of the share tonight. And it would be a beautiful exchange of energy that if you received a reading that you would come back and really just share your thoughts on what I gave to you at this particular time. Or we're a soul group here. Many of you are texting, telling me it felt like I was speaking directly to you because that's what we do. And I tell you guys, every time I get the beautiful opportunity uh, to be in front of you and to share wisdom, to share knowledge what happens is I get a chance to do a reading for myself as well. And so I'm always talking to myself in some regards, past, present, or future uh, uh, at this particular time. 
but I love you all. Be good to yourselves. Be good to others. I look forward to seeing you in the cosmic streets. I look forward to reading your comments and we're going to get ready to get out of here. So peace and love. So family, I love you so much. Peace and love. Oracle kisses. Ciao. We got to play a little bit of music. Let's 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 hear a little bit of Back to the Motherland. And while I'm playing Back to the Motherland, what would be great? Make sure you check out the links there. We got merch, you guys. If you go up under the shopping tab. Oh, how come it didn't work? I I should have merch. We actually got new merch that's out. You could actually go to the Instagram page if it's not going to be available on the show if you don't see it uh, so that you can be able to get the merch that is there um, because I would love for you all to get it. There are t-shirts that are out and it's a way to support the platform, support the work. Don't forget to check out the digital download store. I have lots of goodies there. Um, as well as we will have some more things that's coming up. And yes, I'm going to be opening my book for one-on-one -on -one sessions or readings for us. Liquid Magic, everyone who's doing Liquid Magic, I will be sending out the replay for that as well. Make sure you are connecting with your Liquid Magic and doing uh, the self uh, quest that was sent with the Liquid Magic as well as self-invested, you will be getting your assignment and replay as well. So on that note, I'm going to get out of here. We're going to listen to some music. So yeah, I would love to, while I'm up still working, to come back and to read your comments, your takeaways, especially if you were able to get in and to get a reading and to let me know how that resonated with you, how you connected with that and what did you take away from that? I love you all. I love you. You are all stars shining bright, shining bright in the sky like diamonds that you are. So peace and love. So family, peace and love. Yeah. All right. So this is a great time that you can tell us who you are. Well, we know who you are. You can tell us where you're tuning in from, what city, what state, what country. Peace and love. I'm <laughs> 